Welcome again to one of our, our sessions on getting to know your staff. And on today, we are blessed to have Pastor Darren Brake to uh, let us know, give us some insights to himself. And he's been the one that's interviewed each one of us. So now he gets a turn on the hot seat. And we're all really looking forward to, looking forward to this. So Pastor Darren, thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time that we get to know you a little bit better and um, you get to let us know where you're at. I appreciate the time. Absolutely. This is this is an honor and uh, it's, the pleasure is all mine. Okay, well, starting off, Doc, give us a little information about where you're from. How'd you arrive at the house of the Lord? Okay. I am born and raised um, in Akron, Ohio. Uh, how I ended up at the house of the Lord is actually kind of interesting because I grew up uh, in, a, in a small family church. I uh, was baptized at four years old. My, uh, my great uncle uh, was the pastor. Uh, his name was W.C. Doty. And actually, for a period of time, he was a pastor of St. John on Hawkins Street, right down the street from the church for, uh, for a period of time when he was in the CME church. Uh, when he left the CME church, he started a non-denominational church. But as I got older, I realized there was a lot of still CME elements <laughs> in, in, the, in the church. <laughs> no doubt. No so doubt. I don't know. It was probably more in, in name than, than in function um, in, in hindsight. But I had, a, I had a really good relationship with him. Uh, I was following him around uh, after service. And uh, he asked me, he said, why do you keep following me around? And I told him I wanted to be saved. And um, he asked me if I knew. Oh. what that meant and uh i explained it to him and uh wasn't too long after that that uh that i was baptized and i was i was four years old and uh that was the, the church i grew up in um he later retired um and my aunt became the pastor and so she was my pastor uh the majority of my life uh growing up and into into adulthood and it was actually there is where i first realized that i had this this uh believe this call to to preach and um and my aunt was actually probably was actually the first person to affirm it and, and give me an opportunity to preach and um and that was actually in i believe it was i believe i have the date i know the year but i believe it was july uh 20th of 2008 was the uh the first sunday i, I ever preached and uh and so I, I i preached and i knew i had this call and, but within like that next year, my aunt was transitioning. She was retiring. Um, a part of her retirement, as I was supposed to, uh, I was supposed to get ordained there. Um, but as a part of her retiring and me really kind of seeking the Lord and, and feeling the Lord really kind of pulling me um, to go someplace else, um, I was really more, for me, it was more about being in a place where God wanted me. Mm -hmm. um, more than staying there because, you know, of what was the expectation. Mm -hmm. And um, as I sought the Lord and was talking to my parents about it, um, I really started to lean towards the house of the Lord. Um, and part of that was my dad was a member there a long time ago before I was even, uh, before I was even born. I think he met my mom when, uh, when he was a member there. Um, but more than that, I had ran into Pastor Butts at a Love Akron prayer luncheon. And we ended up so happy that we ended up sitting next to each other after the prayer gathering and we had lunch together. And the questions that that he was asking me um, about my call and what it meant to be called, and, and it just really like, really sparked something in me. Um, and I really liked how he was challenging me with his questions. Hmm. And, and I really was drawn to the humility that he, that I saw him serve in uh, from a distance. So as I felt this, this pool, I, um, I ended up, you know, having to, cause my, my cousin was actually the next in line to be the senior pastor there. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a conversation with him to let him know that, you know, I, I felt God leading me someplace else. I did not know where at the time. Um, but I did know that I needed to kind of bring that to a close, mm -hmm. um, before God would show me what was next. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that in faith, um, not knowing where I would go, but through that I felt kind of the, the pull to the house floor became more and more. And um, I ended up sending Pastor Butts an email out of the blue, got his email address off the church website, and was like, hey, do you remember me? We had this conversation, um, Daryl and Yvonne's son, 
Um, and I'm wondering, is there anything at the house Lord that can help me understand uh, and help me be trained in what it means to believe I have this call to preach and this call to pastor? What does it mean? What does it look like? Is there anything that can help me? And um, he emailed me back. We had a conversation. He told me about Logos and this and that. And around this time, there was a uh, Marvin Sapp concert. Hmm. And I went to the Marvin Sapp concert. And that next Sunday, I came back for Sunday service. And so would have it. Pastor Butts was in the narthex like he normally would be. Um, he took me, uh, led me to my seat. <laughs> and I remember sitting down and being like, wow, I think I think this is where I wanted to go. Uh, I think this is where God has me. I was still somewhat reserved because one, um, we'll touch on this. We may touch on this later when we talk about my family. But me and my wife were still we were engaged at the time and she had not, she had not moved up here from Virginia and she was in the process of moving up here. And I don't want to join a church without her, me and her joining it together. Um, and then additionally that it was so different um, from the context of what I had known church to be just because I grew up in this very small family church. Um, so as would have it, my wife moved up um, at the time, well, my fiance at the time she moved up and we started attending together uh, we ended up joining um, because she felt it was a place for us also. And uh, and that's how I ended up at the house of the Lord. I mean, I went through the whole process. I went to the altar, went to the Great Commission room, went through new beginnings. Um, <laughs> went, through the, went through the whole process. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how I ended up at the house of the Lord. That is a huge spiritual legacy there. They're not just in your life in general, but they brought you to the house of the Lord, and we're we're blessed by that um, blessed by that legacy. So thank you for sharing that. You've kind of given us a segue already. So tell us about your family. So I have a uh, we're a family of five. Um, we are a very I, I think we're very interesting, just because not only are we a blended family because I had my oldest son when me and my wife got married, uh, but we also me and my wife met online. Uh, on a website called Christian Mingle, uh, I was uh, I was talking to one of my dad's friends who was single at the time, and I was asking, I said, have you ever, ever met anybody online? And he said, well, yeah, but it was never anything. I met some nice people, but it was never anything serious. So um, that evening, I went home and I was listening to, I think I was listening to like a T.D. Jake sermon or something, and I was, I found this, this Christian Mingle, and I was doing my little profile thing, and I want to say, Within um, maybe two or three days, I ended up connecting with Elena, who ended up <laughs> being my wife. Um, and so we met, we met online. We ended up talking for the first time. I was at a conference down in Dallas, and um, we ended up talking for the first time there. And really, like it, the rest was was history, as they as they say. We we just kind of hit it off immediately. Um, God worked a number of miracles uh, in that. You know, when when after we got engaged, uh, we're looking at <clears throat> her moving up and like trying to find find employment, and she ended up coming up for in, in February. I think it was for Valentine's Day, and uh, ended up getting the interview at a place, and they held the job for her until June when she moved up. Wow! Because um, you know, without that job, who knows if she would have ever really been able to move up? Um, but God worked a miracle. They held a job from February to June. Um, she moved up in June. We got married that following September. And uh, and here we are, uh, 12 years and two additional kids later. <laughs> <laughs> and your children's names are? Um, okay, so the oldest is Donovan. He is 17. Uh, he'll be 18 in October. Uh, the next one is Brayden. He is eight. Uh, he'll be nine uh this coming july and then the the youngest one is uh brandon he is 16 months old okay amen amen well hopefully you know as the as this pandemic um subsides a little bit we'll be able to get back together and people will be able to see you and your family uh, more in, more in person uh than online like this that they can get to know you better Absolutely. knowing you as knowing you as i do and all the things that you're involved in you're a busy person uh, your mind is always working. You got a, a plethora of ideas. When you have downtime and you look to re-energize, what do you do? What are some of your hobbies? So I like I like to read. 
Um, I like to exercise. Um, I, I enjoy family time also. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't, I don't get to have it. I feel as much as I would like to. Um, but I, I, I really do enjoy, uh, just getting on the floor and wrestling around with the kids and watching, uh, watching shows together and stuff like that. Um, I, I do enjoy listening to music, but music is something that's more like always going on. So it's like when I'm in the car or sometimes when I'm working, I have music playing. Um, but probably a, a little known kind of fun fact is I like to play Xbox, NBA, uh, 2K21. Uh, it's the only game I play, or I may play some driving games, but I do sometimes just like to kind of check out and do something mindless. I will jump, I will, uh, I will commandeer. Uh, my my middle my middle child's Xbox <laughs> for for an hour or so uh, <laughs> for an hour okay <laughs> and uh and get on there and play some Xbox okay that's, that's what, uh, give me an idea what's your favorite book set, let's set the Bible aside for a minute just favorite book. Gosh, I don't know. I have a lot of favorites. It all depends on some of the like topics. Okay. So um, probably my favorite book on like leadership would probably be anything from Margaret Wheatley. Um, probably my favorite, one of my favorite um, theological books or authors would probably be uh, Walter Brueggemann. Mm -hmm. um, probably one of my favorite authors when it comes to like culture and biblical culture and stuff would be a uh, guy named Jerome Nayray. Um, and then also a guy named, um, his name is going to escape me now, um, Walden, Walden. Um, I like a lot of his stuff because he does a lot of comparing. Um, he does cultural comparisons. So he'll compare kind of the culture of Israel against the nations and stuff that was around them and kind of pull out some similarities and differences that I find interesting. So it's, it's really somewhat by, by subject. Okay. Um, another probably favorite of mine, um, when it comes to issues of writings around like justice and things like that, um, would, would of course be, uh, uh, the, the late great James Cone. Um, and then even, um, even our own, uh, Bishop Johnson, um, uh, his, his books on, um, the biblical, uh, lens, I think it's called worldview or lens. Um, I've, I've drawn on that book a lot, and as well as the Eight Ministries of the Holy Spirit. There's been a number of times that I read that book when I first joined the church, um, just wanting to get a. There was some language and terminology, and uh, and, I, and so I, I, I read that book, and then there's been a number of times just in writing sermons and things like that. Uh, the way he thoroughly kind of goes into the Eight Ministries of the Holy Spirit has has applied, especially in some sermons I did in Acts by the Acts. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, one of the titles that you hold is lead pastor. And for those that don't know, what is a lead pastor? And how do you define your role and what you do at the House of the Lord as a lead pastor? Okay, I'll, I'll make a couple statements to kind of set it up first. Um, one is, when we think about titles, we have to understand that the titles are unique to the House of the Lord. Um, and that is not just my title as lead pastor, that's all titles. Um, are unique to our family, our fellowship. And there's a good chance that they will not translate <laughs> to what they, to other churches and other communities uh, will probably mean something very different. So in, in terms of how I've accepted it, and also another thing is that I feel like it's something that's always evolving. Um, there was, um, I forget who it was, I think it might've been uh, Samuel Chan that says that once there is a organizational chart. The organization is on the brink of dying because it should always be moving and people shifting and things growing. So I think there is there, what it is, what it means today um, will probably mean something different a year from now. Um, but from right now, I define it by kind of how, how it helps other people. So I feel like if I'm functioning properly as a lead pastor, then I am, I am freeing up Bishop um, and to be the founder and preaching pastor. I'm, I'm freeing him up to, you know, do his work in the city. I joke with him. I call him the city's pastor. 
<laughs> and uh, to do his work in the in the in the in the city and the in the task force that he's leading, and to 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 be able to just focus on the reading and preaching. So as much as I can free him up, I feel like I'm doing my job as, as lead pastor of taking a, of taking away some of the day to day ministry stuff. Um, I also see it as a function of where I I kind of facilitate ministry happening for other people. Um, and, but also with kind of a, with a, with, with the guardrails of kind of where I'm sensing God leading the church. Um, so I, I see my function as a way of trying to facilitate other people getting involved, other people's gifts being used, um, helping, you know, make it easier for people to get in, into ministry. Um, so I really define it as how I can serve the house of the Lord through either, you know, Bishop Johnson and then the members of the House of Lord in terms of facilitating ministry and helping them walk in their callings, but also keeping in mind the guardrails of, you know, where in the direction that, that God is, is sending us. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And I, I appreciate your, your expanded definition of that because I've had a lot of people to ask, well, what is a lead pastor? Because to your point, it is, a, it is unique to the House of the Lord and you don't see that title per se very often in a, in a lot of different circles. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you expanding on that. Kind of connected to that, I wanted to ask also, and you've kind of, I think you've kind of alluded to it, what are some of your, your dreams and desires for the church, for the house of the Lord? I look at it as like, you know, when, when, when you go back to, you know, Joshua's role, so to speak, um, God's mission and vision for the children of Israel never changed. Um, Joshua just had a different, he had a, he had a different, he was a, he had to run a different leg of the race um so i see it as just running my leg of the race bishop has a leg of the race we're overlapping at this point and will be for a period of time um but i see my job as as running the same race just a different leg so the same mission the same vision um that that the church was founded on 47 years ago um I just want to, I want to, I want to run my leg of the race well. Um, and I want to see us, you know, just move further down that, that track, um, be it through, you know, our, our community involvement, um, be it through a place where people are connecting and in relationship with each other, um, be it through um, sound biblical teaching. And I, I think even just, and if you look at, I think, I'm going to paraphrase, I may get some of it wrong, but Bishop says his preaching purpose is to provoke deep biblical consideration uh, of truths that people habitually prefer not to think about. Um, my preaching purpose is to wrestle with the blue notes of life and find hope in the gospel. So even in our God-given purposes of what we feel we're preaching, they're very similar mm -hmm. um, <laughs> in that regard. Um, you, we, we're, we're taking different slants, you know what I mean? There's different mm -hmm. age experience and things like that there, but even that is very, I find it very interesting. It's very similar, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and what we feel our preaching purposes is. So I really just see it as, you know, running my leg of the race, still moving forward the, uh, the mission, vision, um, and purpose that God created the house Lord for, you know, over 47 years ago. Oh, praise God! I really like that blue note analogy. That's a that's a that's a tagline now. So you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll hear from me, you'll hear from me more more often. Now. There's, there's a lot behind that. Finally, uh, aside from everything that's been mentioned already, what is it that you would want the House of Lord family to know about Darren Brake? Um, two things. Um, and maybe three once I start talking. <laughs> but right now, it's two. For it. Um, it. the first thing is that that I love that I love him. Um, and, and my wife does too. Um, I think, uh, people would be surprised to know how much, how many conversations me and her have, uh, about, you know, how can we love the house of the Lord well? Um, and, and really, uh, that's something that, I mean, we talk about all the time. So I think just the fact that I want them to know that, that I, not only I love them, but, uh, but me and my wife love the house of the Lord. We love the house of the Lord. We love the people of the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the second thing is that I think because of my age, there may be a preconceived notion of that my priority is in alignment with people that are that are around my age. 
Um, but I want people to know that I that I care about everyone, all age groups of the house of the Lord. And I think that, you know, I want to see ministry happen for everybody. Um, I'm a, interested, I'm, I think people, some of this may have come out in my preaching, but I'm different in that I have a great appreciation for old hymns mm -hmm. um, as I do for some of the newer music. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that kind of goes to um, just kind of how I'm wired. I have a great, you know, I, I enjoy spending time with my grandparents and, you know, listen and hear my grandmother tell me stories about, you know, growing up as a, as a, the child of a sharecropper and the hymns and what God meant to her. So I have, so I, I love ev the whole body and I'm, and I want to see all of us move together. I want to see ministry happen for, for all of us. Um, not just for a certain subgroup um, of us, I, but I want to see all of us move together as a community because I think that we need all of us. Mm -hmm. um, we need wisdom. We need energy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that needs to come together. I don't think it's an either or, um, but it's a way of loving everyone well so that we can all move. I mean, the children of Israel, they had all different ages. And they all were on that same journey together and they all were going to the same place and they all had a role and they all had a function. Nobody was just, you know, just along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so I, I, I want, I want that to be communicated too. that, that is not, um, I'm not approaching this with an eye of, you know, what's good for just one subset of the membership, but I, I'm approaching the church. I want to love and minister to, to everyone. Amen. Amen. Well, my brother, thank you for your time. I appreciate your heart. I appreciate you being transparent and sharing about you, your family, your heart, your mission, uh, how you see your relationship with Bishop. All that's vitally important, and it gives us uh, a greater sense and breadth of, of who you are and, and uh, not, to, not to put you in a box as uh, as you kind of alluded to because because of your age. So again, uh, Pastor Dan Bray, thank you for your time. Appreciate you. My pleasure. And uh, take care. All right.